tonight's session for teas. Things I do not have a lot of videos on. What in the world does that mean? So before I actually dive into the first problem with you all tonight, there's two things that come to mind, probability and dividing monomials. These are actually two things that are somewhat new to the T's, I guess you could say. Dividing monomials, you might say, what the heck is that? And if you've ever been to my website, if you haven't, go to my T's website. And one of my favorite things, I like it so much that I put it up here at the top. I love searching websites for words. If I'm trying to find a keyword real quick on a website, Command F on a Mac, and watch what happens if I type in monomial. It only pops up one time on my T's math website. I don't have a lot of videos on it. I do have one video, but check this out. This is something that, you know, I, ha I do have videos on it, but not directly related to the T's. But probability, the word probability does not get mentioned a single time on this page. So I thought tonight's live session would be great for me to have a video focused specifically on the T's for probability. So those are going to be the two things I talk about tonight. Before I give you an example, I want to talk about what probability is. First of all, probability is going to be anywhere in between 0% and 100%. But we could also just say anywhere between 0 and 1. And you might say, well, how is 0 and 1 the same thing as 0% and 100%? Well, 0 and 1 are the decimal representations. But probably most of us, when we hear probability, we probably hear it in percentages. For example, I'm going to show you an example in a second too, but like the weather forecast. If there's a 75% chance of rain, that is technically a probability. The probability of it raining is 75% if you saw that on the weather forecast. But probabilities are going to be somewhere in between 0 and 1, a.k.a. 0% and 100%. Now, if something has a probability of 0, a.k.a. 0%, that means it's impossible. It's not going to happen. Now, what about 1 or 100%? That means it's definitely going to happen. Now, we can't have a lot of probabilities between 0 or 100%. Again, zero, not going to happen, 100% guaranteed to happen, and then we can have some probabilities in between. So I've already mentioned the chance of rain tomorrow. These are essentially probabilities. But some other ways to think about it, for example, flipping a coin, that one out of two, you can think of that as a fraction, one slash two. 0.5, if you grab your calculator and we do one divided by two, Notice we get 0.5. 1 divided by 2, that is a fraction essentially. There's our decimal. And how do you convert a decimal to a percent? You either move the decimal two places to the right or you multiply by 100. So what I want you all to see here, and you're going to see it in the examples tonight, 1 out of 2 or whatever the fraction may be, you can get a decimal representation for probability or you could get a percent as well. And this kind of relates to fractions and decimals and percents. If you've seen any of my T's videos, that's one of the main ones I always tell people to start off with. Fractions, decimals, percents. So with all that said, I do have an example. So suppose you rolled a fair six-sided die. What is the probability that you roll a five? If you roll a die, you got a one on one side, a two on another, three dots, then four dots, then five dots, then six dots. So the probability of you rolling a five, there's only one side, only one side out of a total of six sides. Think about that. See, some of y'all might have thought, oh, rolling a five is going to be five out of six. No, there's only one side on a dice that has five dots on it. So there's only one out of a total of six sides. And, th and that's how we need to interpret that. There is only one out of six total sides that contains a five, AKA five dots. One out of six, that is the probability. Unfortunately, y'all, what is this one out of six? This one out of six is our 
fraction representation. And looking at our multiple choice, we don't have, whoops, we don't have anything in fraction form. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this fraction, let's convert this fraction to a decimal. So let's take one divided by six. This is the decimal representation. And what I'm trying to do here is kind of really stress what I mentioned a few minutes ago too. T's math, fractions, decimals, and percent. It is a huge goal, but now I'm focusing on probability. So there's our decimal, 0.16 repeated. And then we have percent. To convert a decimal to a percent, that's why you need to know. You need to know how to go from fractions to decimals to percents. You either move the decimal two places to the right, or you multiply by 100. So I'm just gonna multiply it by 100 up here on the calculator. And we got 16.6 .6 repeated. Since it says round to the nearest percent, this essentially means round to the nearest whole number. And if I take that six, it'll tell this other six to go up, which is approximately 17%. So C is our answer. And, and let, let, let me bounce back real quick. Remember, probability, between zero and one, AKA between 0% and 100%. In this case here, our answer was definitely in between 0% and 100%. It was 17%. You got just as good a chance of rolling a one on a die as you do rolling a two, as you do of rolling a three or a four or a five or a six. That's the whole point of having a fair six-sided die. You got just as good a chance as rolling any one of those numbers as you do another number on those die. I hope that makes sense. All right, next problem. The question says, what is the probability of drawing a nickel? So what we know is there are 10 nickels in Jackie's purse. 10 out of what? Out of a total of what? How many total coins do we have here? I don't care about the value. I just care about the number of coins. We got 15, 24, 25. So 10 out of the 25 coins are nickels. And I should just say it like that. But, but, but what I wanna hit on, this first number, 10, is how many you have of whatever you're talking about whether it be marbles, candy, in this case, how many nickels. And then the second number, the bottom number, is going to be the number we divide by, the total. So 10 out of 25, now that is a fraction. We can go ahead and divide that, which is 0 0.4. Just convert that fraction to a decimal by dividing. And then if you wanted to get that percent, you can move the decimal two places to the right, or you can multiply by 100. So all of these mean the same thing. Something I want to point out is that you may see an answer in fraction form like this. Where in the heck did that come from? I mean, I know we don't see it up there, y'all. Our answer's D, but where in the heck did this come from? Yeah, student said simplify. That's exactly right. So you may have to simplify a fraction. I mean, we didn't hear, we have our decimal, that's what we were after, but check it out. I mean, take both of these numbers here and divide them by five. 10 divided by five is two, 25 divided by five is five. But all of these are valid answers. 10 over 25, 0.4, 40%. Two out of five, watch this. Two divided by five, boom, same decimal. And I'm gonna to try to get you on that right here in a moment. Here is our next probability question. This one is a little weird. You gotta read this chart or know how to read this chart. A group of people were asked what their favorite ice cream flavor was. The results are shown in the table below. What is the probability that a person chose either chocolate or vanilla? That a person, a person, it could be male or female, they either chose chocolate or vanilla. So we're talking about these right here. 10 males chose vanilla, 15 males chose chocolate. Are y'all seeing how I'm reading that chart? Males, 15 males chose chocolate. 
But then we have 25 females chose vanilla and 35 females chose chocolate. It did not specify whether it be male or female. It just says that a person. So we're going to use all of these because, again, any person and it could be chocolate or vanilla. So there are, add these together, 10 plus 15, that's going to be 25, plus 25 more, that is 50 plus 35, we have a total of 85 people, and that's out of how many people do we have in all? Uh, let's see. So we got 40 males in all, and what about females? 80. So that's a total of 120 people. So here's how we have to read this, y'all. 85. There's 85 out of a total of 120 people that picked either vanilla or chocolate. You might say, well, how do I know to pick the males and the females? It's a person. It did not say just males or just females. It said a person. So we don't care whether it's a male or a female. We don't care whether it's vanilla or chocolate. It's all four of these. Now, the shortcut here is to take 85 divided by 120, and we get this crazy decimal. And if you actually go down your list and divide these to see which one gives you the same decimal. Luckily, if I'm not mistaken, it was A. Let's take 17 divided by 24. And yeah, check that out. Let me, let me re-show that to you. Take the 85 people that either pick chocolate or vanilla, divided by a total of 120 folks. There's that probability in a decimal. And that is approximately 71-ish percent, by the way. Remember tonight, you know, we did talk about percentages could also be probability. And now the calculator shortcut, go down our list. It just so happens it's the first choice. 17 divided by 24 gives us that same exact decimal. So A is our answer. Now, some of you may have simplified, which is fine. So 85 divided by 120, I'm going to divide the numerator and denominator by 5. What is 85 divided by 5? Ooh, 17. By the way, how did I know I could do that? How did I know that I can divide 85 and 120 by 5? Because both of these numbers end in either 5 or 0. That is a divisibility rule. You don't have to know that. But if a number ends in a 5, a whole number, if it ends in a 5 or 0, guaranteed you can divide it by 5. So let's take that 120 divided by 5 and we get 24. And there's that same fraction which is why we got the same decimal. So I did mention two things tonight, and that was probability, which is what I've spent the most time talking about tonight. Dividing monomials. So what I want to leave you all with is this one last question right here. And what we want to do here, I teach this in developmental math and college algebra. It's like an easily a 50 minute lecture. But for what y'all need to know, first of all, Divide those. And it looks like that's not going to help you one bit because every single one, oh, okay, maybe it will. Actually, it will help us eliminate one of them. If I take 48 over 18, it reduces to give us 8 over 3. And let me show you why. We can divide these numbers by a couple of different things 48 divided by 6, 18 divided by 6. We could Now, you may have divided by 2, you may have divided by 3. 6 is the biggest number. 48 divided by 6 is 8. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So that's where the 8 thirds is coming from. Now, for the variables, do y'all see any more x's in the problem? I don't see any, right? So x has to be at the top. Because there's no X's to cancel out. And it's weird because I'm talking about canceling out. Now, up here, the X, there's nothing to cancel out. But when we look at the Y's, and here's what you need to do. Ask yourself, where do we have more Y's at? Where do you have more Y's at? We have more Y's at the bottom, right? We got Y to the fifth power at the bottom. We have Y to the second power at the top. What you do, so I've already put the blue at the bottom. I'm going to put a Y, and you want to put how many more you have down there. We got five of them at the bottom. We got two of them at the top. There is a rule where you're technically subtracting exponents. That's all we're really doing. I see Y to the fifth, Y to the second, 
we have more Ys at the bottom, so I'm going to keep the Y at the bottom, and we subtract our exponents. We have three additional Ys at the bottom. Let's move on. It's the same rule. Let's look at our Zs. We got Zs at the top, Zs at the bottom. Where do you have more Zs at? We have more Zs at the top in our numerator. How many more Zs do we have at the top? It's five minus two again. So that's gonna be Z to the third. And now, so we have this W cubed, this W to the third power. And notice we don't have any Ws up top. It's kind of like the X. The X was the lone rider up here. There was no more X's or there's no more W's. So we have to keep that W where it is. There's nothing to take away. There's no exponents to subtract. But here's our final answer for that. And if we go and look, 8XZ to the third, looks like this one right here, right? 3Y cubed. D. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if we have any guys in here, whatever, <laughs> uh, I hope y'all found it helpful. Y'all take care. Have a good rest of your evening. Good night.